from gun reform to abortion to same-sex marriage to other issues in the South Carolina State House, I sit down one-on-one -on -one with State Representative Lynn Bennett for a special edition of Quentin's Close-Ups. And be sure to download the free Quentin's Close-Ups app in your Apple or Google Play stores. Representative Bennett. It's good to see you again, my friend. And it's good talking to you again. We talked this morning for your uh, WTM morning show in which you filled in for Charlie James. Yes, we did. We had a good conversation. And if there's anybody out there in this city that doesn't know you by now, they do after this morning. Oh, thank God for that. Amen. Well, let me turn to some issues that you're going to face at the South Carolina State House later this week. Okay. And this is a headline from the state newspaper, and it reads this. SC GOP to lawmakers, PASH abortion ban now. Why now for abortion? Um, I, w <laughs> I wasn't aware that SCGOP was telling the lawmakers to ban abortion. Um, there isn't a bill mm -hmm. to ban abortion. Mm -hmm. um, I know there is the personhood bill. There's concern about that bill because it may not meet the federal requirements of the Hyde Amendment, and they've sent it back to committee to be reviewed. Um, but that, other than the anti-dismemberment bill, which doesn't remove a single abortion procedure, I'm not aware of any bill that would actually ban abortion. Mm -hmm. it, that's, um, that is something I've convinced myself in reality. We live in the real world, and until we change enough hearts and enough minds as to what is actually going on, um, in a woman's womb, that this is a small little person and not a kidney or, you know, another, another organ, but okay. a, a separate and different human being. Until we win that, that war of hearts that I feel like we're fighting, this is a war mm. um, of darkness and lightness. Um, the more hearts that we open up and enlighten as to what is going on, inside these women's bodies. It, we, will, we will have abortion with us. It will always, and even if they overturned Roe v. Wade tomorrow, abortion would never, would still not be illegal. It was legal before Roe v. Wade. It was just up to the states. Mm -hmm. So the states will be able to decide if they want to continue with that procedure or not. Mm -hmm. um, chances are that South Carolina, and I know, I have friends on both sides of the aisle that are pro-life. Um, we probably wouldn't, but there are places like North Carolina where you might be able to okay. still get an abortion. But it does, Roe v. Wade does not ban, elimination of Roe v. Wade does not ban abortion either. Let me turn to uh, some news that you actually know about, and this is from WIES. Two bills in the South Carolina State House floor are attempting to stop building it. Yes, and that has, um, I've been working very hard with Representative Samuel Rivers on right. that, um, 4701 and 4702. 4702 is a little bit stronger, but 40, the attempt of 4701 was to standardize bullying procedures in our school because as it stands now, every district can kind of make up their own rules on what bullying is and how they're going to handle it. And sure. it's handled differently. And the problem that we've run across is the is twofold. The children who are being bullied sure. um, are having a hard time. The bullies aren't being addressed. Um, the problem with why they may be bullying, I don't know if it's abuse at home, if it's neglect at home, if it's just a, a violent environment that they're hanging out in. We need to find a way to figure out what is causing this problem and how can we fix it and how can we work with all of these children's parents to prevent this from happening. Um, the, the bill that was up there, 4701, really laid out a procedure. It, you know, it said you were going to do certain things. Um, if you, know, you would have counseling would be one thing. You might have to write a, a paper mm -hmm. on bullying or an essay on bullying and turn that in. And then it would go all the way through this process. Well, that was all watered down to actually basically incorporate what we have in our state, this called the model bullying po pro policy, which says nothing, which is what they're doing now that's not working. And I was disappointed in that. And the legislator who managed to model that down the very next day, who said that, who several of them did, I was the only one voted against watering it down. Right. 
um, had an incident in her district where a child was bullied so severely that the parents ended up calling the police uh, because they couldn't get satisfaction from the school system and so the police came responded and the police went to the school and asked the school why they hadn't done anything about this and the school's answer was this doesn't fit our definition of bullying so we have a problem we have a real problem if it gets to a point that a parent has to call law enforcement to protect their child and the school is saying this doesn't fit our definition of bullying or our policy on bullying, but it's enough that you could have them arrested for assault and battery. Something's wrong with our system. So we're going to, um, that has been bullied down. The only good thing that came out of that was we now have defined bullying. What exactly bullying in school is was added in to the, so they'll have to go back and redo their policies to incorporate this. But they can choose, I mean, one school can choose, you know, if, if you're, if you're verbally harassing a student, you know, you could write a paper or you could sit in a class alone or maybe your parents might be called and or you might have to talk to the principal and go back to the classroom. Or and another school could take a whole different approach because there's no standardized policy in this state and everyone gets to handle it their own way. So we're hoping that maybe on the floor we can get that process back in to standardize it. And then the second bill really requires counseling for students that bully. Okay. Um, if you have a track record of bullying, and there's been lots of complaints, that would the policy would be that you must go to five counseling classes. And schools have counselors for this sure. kind of stuff. Um, and your parents would have to be attend two of those. We have to be in the presence with you and attend two of those. Because one of the things that we've learned is you can't do this without the parents. And everybody's always telling us the parents need to get involved. Well, the parents aren't going to always get involved unless they have no other choice. Mm -hmm. That's just the way. And so this was, this was done in hopes that we'd be able to address whatever is the underlying problem is with this bullying, with the bully as well as getting the parents involved and possibly helping the parent to work with this child, to understand what the child is going through. So a lot of people, they don't have parenting skills like I did when I was growing up. The, the family unit's been broken down. There is, there is no family like there used to be 50 years ago. Families are different. And parents, a parent or parents, I believe, and Mr. Rivers believes, needs help, needs some guidance, needs some counseling, needs someone that can help them turn this child around. Now, are we going to save 100%? No. But, John, if we save 95%, I think it's worth a try. If we save 50%, I think it's worth a try. We can't just keep letting our children year after year after year get lost in the system that we've allowed to build up the system of violence. Everything these children see in their daily lives anymore is violent. Their TV is violent. Their music is violent. Their movies are violent. Their games are violent. Some of them live in abusive homes and they see violence all the time. At some point, the adults have to step forward and help these families to deal with this. And as you can tell, it's pretty passionate with me. I want. To I want to help kids. I don't want to hurt kids. Sure. But at the same time, I don't think the kids who are the subject or the victims of bullies should be subject to sitting there all the time being bullied without some kind of policy that removes them from the classroom, from these students who aren't doing anything, but are the, the results. I mean, these children get severely depressed, so they need help. Some of them can contemplate suicide. Um, they lose faith in themselves and confidence in themselves. So we have a whole lot of kids that we need to address. Not just the bullies, they need to be addressed. But the, the children who are subjects of the bullies need a reprieve as well. You talk about schools and you talk about students. This is another headline from the state newspaper and it reads this. Governor McMaster says he will sign a bill to arm teachers. Good for, good for the governor. Um, I would say if you were a teacher and you wanted to carry a, a firearm and you were trained 
that's fine. If you don't want to carry one, that's fine too. If your school, I think we need to be open about this and let let the schools decide. Some schools maybe may have the wherewithal to hire better security people. We have retired military that I'm sure would love to do that. We'll see what happens to the governor's bill. It needs to be debated. It needs to be discussed. Um, unlike some states, this is not a state where people aren't around firearms. You'll find teachers that are hunters. Oh. Um, you know, you'll you'll find people's children go hunting. You see pictures of them right. on social media. So uh, unlike some places where guns are frightening to some people, I think. South Carolina might be able to handle that fairly well. And let me turn to a Newsweek article. It says this, South Carolina Republicans table bill to define gay marriage as parody marriage. When you read this, what do you say? <laughs> I, I thought that was interesting, um, and I understood what it was, but they had a hard time explaining it. Okay. It was truly about the, the religious definition of marriage, because there is a concern okay. um, that that there is encroachment into the religious, into churches and the definition of marriage. And I think, I didn't write the bill, so I'm right. just telling you what I think. Right, right, right. I think that, that that was just it. There was a concern that in our church, we don't want to be forced to recognize anything outside of the Bible. Um, if, that, if, if people want to get married, there should be another system that isn't marriage. I mean, we talked about this before, civil unions or something like that. Um, but that was really an attempt to protect the churches. Okay. Wow. Uh, let me turn over to another debate, which is going on right now. And this is from the Maritime Executive newspaper. It reads this, South Carolina debates offshore drilling. What are you debating about this? <laughs> Who's debating it? That's my question. Okay. Um, I know that uh, Governor Sanford talks about it a lot. Right. But I can honestly say that when I go places, I don't see people bound in the table, banging on the table and saying, you know, no offshore drilling or we need to drill offshore. Um, I hear very few people actually talking about that in our world. Um, I don't know what they're going to do with that. Um, I am not against it. And this, and the, the misleading title here is we're not talking about drilling. We're talking about testing, mapping. Okay. That's all we're talking. That's all they're talking about. Okay. There's no drilling. There's no oil out there. In case anybody's wondering, there is no crude oil off our coast. It's all natural gas. Okay. Um, so they need to have that debate. They need to have that discussion, and but they need to have it honestly. Nobody's drilling okay. right now. They just want to test, and there is no oil off the coast of South Carolina. It's all natural gas. We are still debating about utilities, Santee Cooper and Scandal, oh, Lord, and Dominion I, Energy. Well, you know, the, if the House had its way, y'all would get a 20% cut in your, in your gas and electric bill immediately. Mm -hmm. Senate doesn't seem to agree with us on that, so it's going to take a while. They sent over a resolution right. last week that the House Judiciary is looking at, which would extend the time that they can collect, but we're not sure why they want to extend the time for nine more months. We're not, I mean, I just I don't know the thinking. I'm not in the Senate, but we got the um, the resolution. They're looking at it, and they will probably amend it, and we'll send it back. The people of South Carolina deserve their money back. Period. If you saw the news last week, right. SCE and G paid out 87 million dollars to stockholders. Now they collect 37 million a month from us to go toward this failed nuclear facility. That's two and a half worth, two and a month, two and a half months worth of collected money for a failed utility that just got paid to stockholders. And I don't know how the stockholders can consciously accept that money, knowing that there are people where 20% of an electric bill is a lot of money for them. And the reduction of that 20% would be helpful. If they had heard the stories about people who just heat one room, because they can't afford the electric bill. They heard the story about the farmer who has a barn with two light bulbs burning in it last month in his electric bill, just two light, no heat, just two light bulbs burning in his barn and his bill's $192.
something's wrong at SCENG, and it's and we need to take care of it. We need to get the money back to the people who have they've been cheated. You talk about money coming back to the customers. Obviously, you've seen the commercial that has been since taken down by Dominion Energy. It was so deceptive. It was so deceptive. It was telling people to contact us to approve the merger. Right. We don't approve the mergers. Mergers are private company endeavors. Right. And it's up to the stockholders of SCENG to approve the merger of Dominion and SCENG. So I was getting calls, I was getting emails to approve the merger, and I explained to them, we don't, we don't do that. They're private companies. We have no say in that. And you're promising a thousand dollars per customer back on the amount that's been paid in. Well, that isn't a thousand dollars. That is an estimate. You may only get two fifty or three hundred or three fifty, depending on where you fit on the scale of rate pay payers, which they can't even define to us what a rate payer is. Somebody that has a really high bill may get a thousand, may get more than a thousand. So people are thinking they're getting this thousand dollar check in the mail and it's not going to happen. And the whole ad was so dis misleading and deceptive. They had to take it down when we called them on it. Right. Not only that, it is just interesting that the week before last I was inundated with emails right. about this whole e about this effort and um, come to find out these emails were fraudulent. They were the names of my constituents. They were addresses in my district. But the um, IP addresses were all fake. And they came out of a company that does public relations for Dominion and Scanna. And they both say they don't know anything about it. But you can go to this public relations firm site, and there is, um, there is a copy of exactly what we were sent okay. on their site. Um, so it's been turned over to, the, to SLED and the Attorney General's office. For investigation because that is fraud. When you are sending out emails under someone else's name, using their name and their address, you've got a problem. Somebody needs to answer for that. You say you don't know, and you guys really don't know who ratepayers are. Who is a ratepayer in your mind? In my mind, a ratepayer is anybody that's paid the South Carolina Gas and Electric Company. If you wrote a bill every month, if you flipped on your lights, if you have a gas stove right. or a gas fireplace or a, a washer, dryer, water heater, whatever, and you are paying SCENG for that service, whether you're a homeowner, a bank owner, a dry cleaners, a jewelry store person, a farmer, you are a rate payer. You, your rates were increased to build this facility all across the board. Nobody was given a reprieve. And everybody that paid any money to SCNG should be entitled to not only a reduction in their monthly rates, but to a refund if that's what they're going to do. Which I don't, I honestly don't see them doing a refund. The more I learn about this thousand dollar thing and it's, it's not going to be a refund. It's not going to cover any. Most people paid an average of over $3,000 toward this facility that's not going to be built. And um, I just can't see them ever giving back an average of $1,000. And there'll be no way for us to track it. Oh, wow. You know, there'll be no way for us to really know if they, they are a private industry. Mm -hmm. I think they're just, I think this was what was going to help them lighten the load and get people excited about this deal. But the more that I've learned about this deal, the less the less optimistic I become. I should have asked this question instead of that question before, but we all know who a ratepayer is. But do these utility companies define them as rate players? Do they know who a ratepayer is? We don't know. We've asked. Um, at one of the hearings, um, Representative Peter McCoy oh, yeah. asked them to tell us, could they tell us who's a ratepayer? They couldn't tell us. So I don't know who they defined as a ratepayer. I can't, I can tell you who I think it is. Right. I can tell you probably who Peter thinks it is. Right. But I can't tell you who they think it is. Going forth, what will be coming next from the South Carolina State House? 
Oh my goodness, well we have some uh, bills coming up related to, to medical, I'm beginning calls on um, nurse practitioners, physician's assistants, um, that we're going to have to get through and figure out how to do that. Um, rural areas need some help. They, they don't have MUSCs and, right. you know, Roper hospitals out right. there. Um, so they're, they're looking at ways to try to get physician's assistants and nurse practitioners out there. But we need to make sure that they get good quality care at the same time that we're sending these um, professionals out in, into the rural areas to help doctors. We need to make sure there's good oversight. We, um, we need to make sure that people are getting good health care, that they're not getting a lower standard of care, which is a concern for many of the doctors that I've spoken to. Okay. So we need to look at that. That's going to be a um, pretty interesting thing. Um, we need to help. Mm -hmm. We need to find a way to help. And doctors aren't going to move out to Hampton to County. Or, or, yeah, right. exactly. Not like, um, so we'll, we'll have to just see where that goes. But that, um, I've been getting a lot of calls from that because people are concerned they want to help, but they want it to be the right thing. Mm -hmm. Well, State Representative Linda Lynn Bennett, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate this. Well, thank you, and congratulations to you. I hear you're receiving a big award this week. Yes, indeed. And I, I don't take sides in any parties, but I'm just happy to be honored and happy to be a public service to the Charles You Center. deserve to be honored, and when you see Ms. Alveda King, would you yes. give her a hug for me? Because she will. is my hero. Oh, that's good to hear. I would definitely do that, and hope I'm hoping to interview all of her, all the honorees, including her, Wednesday. That'll be good. You'll be busy Wednesday. Oh, yes. yes. Well, congratulations. You deserve it. Thank you. I appreciate this.